Welcome to Sculpture Studios. Something a little more interactive in this piece today, a lovely long project with plenty of work on film. We're replacing a children's slide on a cruise ship in the shape of a dragon. That's the slide and not the cruise ship. And the dragon's face is, well, looks like that. What we're doing is not simply repainting or repairing the slide, as it's a little worn out by this stage. Being exposed to the elements and the barrage of tiny hands and feet over the years, we're going to be replacing this completely. Staying pretty much true to the original format, in terms of the overall size and positioning, we're going to be giving this a complete revamp. Here we've put together a concept image of how we see this looking, based on the client's brief. This mermaid character, that's featured around the child-friendly areas of the ship, is going to be welcoming the children up the stairs to slide down into the pool. Whilst the ship was docking down in Southampton, Aidan took the opportunity to head down that way and take some proper measurements on board. The Morella Explorer was due for a rather intensive refurbishment in a couple of months' time, brought into dry dock in France. This will be in a town called Brest, fantastic place name, so we need to make sure that this slide will be ready in time to be delivered and installed within that dry dock window. Hopefully you've put a bit of time aside for this one, so sit back and enjoy the process. Jess, what's happening? Making a slide. Uh, there's steps up to the slide. That's going to be the kiddie waiting area. And the slide that goes down into the pool. We've got our mermaid on here, and then we'll have lots of shells. It will be decorated like sand. It's for a kiddie swimming pool, which is quite small, but it's got a low gradient. Look at that mermaid. So basically, the client had a really odd, awfully ugly dragon. Uh, that was apparently ter ter terrifying the kids. So, uh, so we're going to create this one a little bit more more child friendly, and um, oh, that's our our plus size um, <laughs> our plus size mermaid, child friendly mermaid. And uh, yeah, this is the beginning stages. We've got some poly in, so let's start blocking this out, shall we? We've got numerous other projects already on the go here in the studio, but you know by now that that's not going to be stopping us, as this client's left plenty of time and the communication's been nice and swift, so this allows us to proceed straight away. The whole slide is going to be broken down into multiple pieces for transportation, and this means it's gradually going to spread out around the studio for different people to work on each segment. Large billets of polystyrene that we have delivered in 8 by 4 by 2 foot sections are marked out with grids and tracing papers to then be hot wire cut down to size. A lot of people ask where we get the blocks of foam from, where we get the hot wires from, and various other tools and materials, but hey, Aiden had to put in the legwork over the years and source these himself. We're not going to make it that easy for you. New project starting, doing some work on a cruise ship, and this is me just now blocking it out. And that's how big it's going to be. And that's what the little mermaid looks like. She's going to be sitting just on that corner there. So, just starting work now. with the progress so far. The majority of this has been blocked out using our trusty hot wires. Everybody wants to know where we get these from. Oh, another secret of Sculpture Studios. No, 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 no. no. no, no, no. All this is a did together using a polyurethane expanding foam. Yeah, sure. Come oh, on yeah. this. Sculpture Studios on there, see Oh, it's even branded. I say you know you can't buy that off the shelf. All stuck together using the PU squirty foam and then we trim all this off afterwards and then Aiden's going to go to work with nail brushes, wire brushes and work down to sandpapers, hone the shape down to what he'd like and then once we've sent these images to the client so they can confirm everything we're then going to start going over with our secretly sourced sticky back tin foil and then a blanket coat of glass fibre. Okay. Ready? 
This doesn't need to be a car body finish as it's going to be rock and sand and all sorts. So we're going to give this a blanket coat of glass fibre. Go over with a flow coat of resin, work up the surface where appropriate so the kids don't hurt themselves and there's no sharp points. And then artwork accordingly. Isn't that right Jess? Oh look! Even got beach on her top. That's it. Sandy. half past six I'm about to start carving with my trusty little hot wire on off here I go apart from the overall size parameters the heights and the layout of the slide itself we've got a relatively free reign over how this will eventually look. We're going to be adding loads of extra details once the main body of the shape has been carved, so that this isn't just a giant mess on deck, but rather something that adds some proper theming that the kids can enjoy too. You working on some boobies round here, Aidan? Yeah, I made a bit of a booby round here. Booby or a boo-boo? I hope not a boo-boo. Surely not the Aidan Hines making a boo-boo. This is the beginning stages of the mermaid. Yeah, got to push it right back and reduce it as well. Rather than being sitting on the rock and her arm being able to be grabbed and pulled off and have an anchor point for children to climb up on top of this thing, um, she's going to be slightly more embedded in the rock. So here we have Aiden. You, sir. Yeah. It's me. <laughs> so the mermaid, very nice indeed. We're carving elements to add onto the main body of the shape now, so this can all be included before any glass fibre work begins. This means the client can see the complete master carving in order to approve this, and save us having to explain that more details are going to be added later, they can see the whole thing as one piece. This also allows us to laminate everything in one go, and this will save on a lot of extra work later. There will be no need to bolt through the fibreglass to add these elements on and clean up any pinch points and join lines and makes the whole thing more watertight as well. To save these steps from getting too damaged or too compressed in their polystyrene state, we've put some boards down to spread load the weight. In each of the project videos we create, with all the time lapses and flicking between clips to various points in the process, it's sometimes hard to grasp how long things take. Everything here is cut and carved by hand, and that's not to say a machine could produce it quicker, there are far more time consuming processes through having this cut by machine, but something like this takes a good couple of months from start to completion. Also accommodating for the work that we already have on in the studio, some projects last a week, others can take up to six months. The amount of times we get approached with a project with something spectacular that's needed by a week's time or in a fraction of the time that it really takes is frustratingly quite a lot. And on the miraculous off chance that we're granted far more time than we actually need, those are the projects that we really hope get commissioned to go forward. Here we have the, um, the children's slide. Children walk along this top piece here, or behind it, and down the slide. So this is the back side of it. You can see the marking on the floor there, that's where the pool is, and it goes underneath the slide. We're adding all little adornments on the side of it, just to pretty it up, because it, we think this is a, well, it was relatively flat otherwise, plus the, the colours will make it a lot nicer as well. The side walls, where, um, where the pool comes to, we've made sure we put side walls there, so the kids don't fall out onto the floor and they land into the pool once they pass this area here. I did more details just to make it more interesting, so for all the nautical feel about it, the sea. I did more shells. This is the young lady that sits on the front, just uh, finishing her off now. But once she's all coloured up and painted, I'm sure she'll look lovely. Still, still working on this area. There's a stairwell. Going to add a bar or some kind of rail that fits in there so they, the kiddies can walk up nicely. Five steps up to the top and a walkway around the side. And 
once again we've uh, addressed out the back of it so it's more interesting I've created these two like conch shells in there so children can sit in there and there depends of the size of the children and that just makes it more interesting on the back side of the job as well and internal access to the whole thing we're going to make um, a very big trap door which is coming up from there through there and down there so it's not a, a mini manhole it's quite a big manhole so you're going to get in and out quite comfortably and where we're thinking the pump and to keep the slide nice and wet we're going to put little vents through here and here and come down both sides through there and through there and it keeps this nice and wet so there's no friction for the children but that up here that's about eight or nine hundred tall, so the small children can't climb over it. We're also angling all these top edges, so there's no grips. We let everything smooth, there's no climbing points. Uh, they don't want to climb it, so we've made all these areas here slope downwards, so kids can't actually climb it. Sticky back tinfoil, another favourite secret material for the fans. This provides a quick, protective barrier over the foam before we go on with any glass fibre. Now the client has seen the photographs and the videos we've sent them, approved the master pattern, and no amendments need to be made, we're all getting on top of this, uh, quite literally. We're using a general purpose resin for this project, as this is going to be situated outside. There's probably no smoking allowed on deck anyway, and this is going to have water running over it, so hopefully fire retardancy isn't too much of an issue. We're going over with a sturdy build-up of around 6 ounces of glass fibre, both as this will have a lot of traffic running up and sliding down it, as well as the fact we'll be removing the polystyrene from the inside. If the poly were kept on the interior, this would make up for a lot of the strength, but as this is going to be hollow, we need to bump up the thickness of the glass fibre. Hold on, buddy. Look at me. Right, hold on, hold on. Hold on. <laughs> 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 And that's the boss. Good thing he can keep a project together and a business running, because he certainly can't keep a straight face. With all of the polystyrene being removed, we need to make sure we bump up the thickness of all the flange walls. We need to make sure that everything goes together well here in the studio, so there are no problems at the other end when Aidan and myself take this down to France. Right, it's your time to shine, Aidan. <laughs> you got to talk to me about it. Oh, all right, right, okay. Right, here we have all the pieces. One, two, three, four, five, six pieces, including the slide. Just loosely put together. We walk up it. I won't go the whole way because we've only got a couple of clamps on at the moment. It's really quite solid. We're going to finish all these surfaces down. We're going to finish all these surfaces down. Uh, and then bolt it and clean it all up together. So okay. it should look really, really nice. So here we have the slide part possibly going on. Nothing's impressive. Nice. Something like it's not going to slide into place properly. <laughs> yeah, the dusty bit. Always great fun having to spend days and days going over the entire surface and cleaning it all up. The fiberglass has had a flow coat layer of resin applied over the whole sculpture and we're now using sanders, sandpapers and a bit of elbow grease to get this to a decent finish. Going over with a flow coat helps to lose that fibrous texture of the mat underneath but this still requires a lot more work. We can't leave any sharp points as even if this wasn't just for the kids we don't want anyone catching themselves or getting injured and we also want this nice and smooth for the artwork. We could go over with an actual sand texture finish, or a concrete render, like we have with projects in the past, but once again, we're trying to eliminate as much opportunity for any injury as possible. Smoother, rather than textured and realistic, is the better option, with the texture being made up in the paintwork. This glossier finish also means that there's less opportunity for dirt to get trapped, and will be a lot easier to wipe down and clean. So now we're on to the painting process, and over here, this is basically the 
it's a crucial aspect of the job. Um, so Ruth, can you just tell the audience at home what you're up to? As this is basically what they need to know for this project. Uh, we're out there for us. We got some sugar. Uh, yeah, Brilliant. Thank you very much indeed. You're a star. Over the sand base coat colour, we've used an air gun in a spluttering, almost spitting type spray to build up the colours of the sand in multiple layers. We're going on with 2K car body paints, which will be suitable for outdoor use, more durable than regular paints, and we'll also accept a 2K lacquer over the top as well. A little airbrush work just deepens all of the details and really brings out a more punchy 3D look. We've made sure to mask up around all of these areas to keep the details nice and neat. It's nice, isn't it? Oh, I, uh, I understand now. So here, Aiden and Clive have gone over with the resin mix as a sort of glue going over with a very fine sand mixture and this will provide some grip for the stairs and on the top platform and just to take the edge off the sharpness of the sand a lacquer is going to be gone over the top we can take a little bit of wear and tear and this will just be a little bit softer on the feet while still maintaining a little bit of grip You know what we haven't really incorporated in this project yet? There's been no boogie. I don't mean bogey. There's bound to be plenty of bogeys from all the kids' hands in a couple of months' time. No, no. I mean tension releasing boogie in here in the studio. Nearing completion of the slide part of the project now. Oh, didn't I mention? We're making another smaller prop to go alongside this. Now we're adding all of the final touches to the artwork, we're also making sure that that slide is nice and smooth. Nobody wants to be sliding down a strip of sandpaper, unless you're into some really weird stuff, so we're making sure this is glossy smooth. The lacquer, going over the top of the entire sculpture, is a gloss coat as well, and this will really help keep the colours nice and vivid, and give the sculpture a shining wet look. So the other prop that we're going to be creating is a model of a duck sitting on top of a rock plinth. Now we don't know if this is going to have a speaker installed or used for anything in particular. All we know is that this is going to be wheelable to move around the ship for potential photo opportunities. And here we have Kev blocking it. Oh, you've already cut the main form. Yes. Quacking straight on with it. quick breakdown of the process here. The polystyrene is being cut using the hot wire table and Aidan's then going to go to work with nail and wire brushes. When we're happy with the shape and we've confirmed the design with the client, this is then sanded down and a soft water-based plaster filler is applied. This only goes on a couple of millimetres thick and we can repeat the process of drying, sanding and filling once again and this is perfect to achieve a smoother result before we're ready for mould making. Even though we're only making one of these ducts, creating a mould and a cast will ensure we get a really smooth, even surface. This is opposed to giving this a blanket coat of glass fibre where the surface can be uneven and will require a lot of cleaning up. 
It's not too much of an issue here on the rock base, where this needs to be a little rougher and uneven anyway. Once this base has been carved, we're going over with a watered down wallpaper paste, and not the adhesive sticky back foil this time, but a very low micron thin foil. This allows for the fiberglass blanket coat to be added over the top, and makes it easier to remove the polystyrene from the inside to hollow the base section out. The mould making process for the duck starts by adding a PVA blue release agent so the resin doesn't stick to the plaster layer. We then go over with a gel coat of resin, a build up of glass fibre, and we create a dividing wall down the centre of the model so this mould can split apart into two sections. Once the polystyrene pattern has been removed from the inside, the mould interior is then cleaned up to ensure for a smoother finish when the cast comes out. We go in with another PVA blue release agent, another gel coat layer and glass fibre to create the cast in two halves. The mould is then put back together so we can laminate the two pieces together from the inside and this involves a hand up the duck's butt. This whole process sounded very quick and straightforward, apart from the duck's arse bit, but this sequence still requires quite a bit of work. A little bit of decoration is needed on the rock base to stay in keeping with the artwork on the slide, and the ducks had a prime, a top coat of a luscious pink with a gold beak, and wheels added to the underside of the base so this can wheel around. Here, we have a driver from Hungary. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> For mine and Aidan's trip, we took a five to six hour drive from our studio in Essex all the way down to Plymouth on the south of England. We then took a Brittany ferry across the English Channel overnight, where luckily we met up with the lorry driver so we could travel the last hour and a half down to Brest together. Well, here he is. Yeah, the thing is, we're trying to get on board now and we need passport control and all the rest of it. But the lorry driver is very keen to get away because of the Brexit. So we're going to try and unload and then and then he can shoot off that. and then we get to work here's the old one that's what we're replacing oh jesus look at that look at that what who thought of that here we are on deck nine and that's the first piece just coming on board the main piece with the uh, mermaid being slung by the crane and there's sean way down on deck on the uh, harbour side with the other pieces. Helping with all the straps, making sure it's all safe. So this took place during the end of September 2019, literally right before one of the supposed Brexit dates was supposed to be. This obviously didn't happen, but we needed to make sure we took this possibility into account in case we couldn't get back into our country of origin the next day. Look how high that is. There's Sean way down there with the bits and pieces. And this is it flying in, quite a scary thing. Right, where are you, Sean? It's on the rear, mate. <coughs> so yeah. it's all been loaded on by a crane, which went surprisingly smooth, actually. Charlie and Aaron helped us out, hooked us up, hooked us up, because it's a crane. And uh, yeah, we're just bumping it together on site now. Yeah. Just thought we'd get a little bit of video while this is still nice and open in the, uh, in the sunlight. And we've got a couple of hours to get this together and then we've got to be off by two. It's about 12 now, so yeah. that's it. And we also have an assistant. What's your name? Dean. Dean is helping us put it all together. Thank you very much, Dean. Right. Sculpture Studios debut, mate. <laughs> <laughs> there he is. He's on our video, this lad. <laughs> yeah, good stuff. Nice one. Yeah, all looking very, very good. Um, Went together very, very well, very successful, really pleased, and it's lovely and strong as well. Okay, you need that. But yeah, everyone was pleased with it, we got on board. Uh, Mermaid, well, what was her name? Melody, isn't it? Something like that? Like Melody Mermaid, yeah. So she's looking really nice. There's no hand grips for the kids to hold, no puddle areas for water to go stagnant. Yeah. All the seam lines have been silicon mastic sealed now as well. Mm -hmm. Little seat areas for little uh, shelfies. Mm -hmm. Take a shelfie. A little, a little child in that one. This door, finally, put on like that. And then locked in place. 
nice and convenient, nice big door. That's if they ever need to get inside to dismantle it, but more importantly, it's so that they can fix up the uh, the pump for the little water jets. And Clive did a very lovely job of getting that nice and glossy smooth as well. With water running down. Yeah, good lad. Perfect. Kid zone. Marella Explorer. Yeah. Another successful job all round. Thank you very much indeed everyone. Yeah, where's that duck? Get a bit of this duck. Oh, there he is. Au revoir. Au revoir, monsieur, madame. <laughs> We'd like to thank Charlie, Jamie, Stephen and Aaron and the rest of the team at Mavan for coming to us with the project and seeing it all the way through to completion. There's always more technicalities when transporting and working in a different country, especially when it's your first time driving yourself in another country, or on the wrong side of the road I like to say. But everything got there in the end and went together successfully. Hopefully the kids will enjoy this new piece of interactive scenery on the Morella Explorer and whoever took the old dragon, we hope he's kept out of children's way from now on. Please feel free to leave any comments below, as they're always appreciated, and hit the subscribe button for our latest videos. You can like Sculpture Studios on Facebook, and follow at Aidan Hines on Twitter, and for more of our work, visit sculpturestudios.co.uk. Thank you very much for watching.